and look at what you did! Open your eyes and look at what you've done! Now that the book is closed on Dexter Morgan, the Dexter fan base is mighty divided, and many fans are upset about the ending, but not me. I enjoyed Dexter New Blood myself. And I especially enjoyed the finale that has much of the base in an uproar. To be sure, the season was far from perfect. There were some big missed opportunities, and the story itself could have been and should have been a little tighter. I thought the worst aspect of the story stemmed from the big bad in Dexter New Blood, Kurt Caldwell. Clancy Brown was tremendous, so my complaint has nothing to do with his performance, which I thought was excellent. The thing I disliked most was the fact that Dexter's first kill in nearly 10 years just so happened to be the son of a fellow serial killer in the same small town. I think that in itself was a huge missed opportunity. The story would have been far more compelling if it played out in such a way where Kurt was a normal guy who was transformed into a monster while hunting down his own son's killer. And instead of having Kurt be a killer, Olsen or some other town, he could have been the killer. All of the dynamics could have worked very similarly. And I think it would have been better if Kurt acted as more of a direct counterpoint to Dexter. If Dexter was a monster who'd been becoming slightly more human during his abstinence, Kurt could have been the upstanding citizen who began descending into madness before becoming a monster. If Kurt had just been some normal guy driven to becoming a monster in an effort to avenge his son, you'd have a situation like Season 3, where Miguel Prado was the big bad, and you had the main killer, the Skinner, kind of doing his thing in a complimentary plotline. And Olsen would have made a good killer. They didn't go this route. But the Olsen character was a silly missed opportunity any way you slice it. And I am shocked that they introduced him without finding some way to figure him into the bigger picture, even if it was in some super small capacity. He was a useless red herring because they didn't wait long to reveal Kurt was the killer. It wasn't like the ice truck killer where his character appeared late. They should have just revealed Kurt in the opening scene like they did Trinity at the beginning of season four. There was simply no need for all the cloak and dagger. The overall writing just felt like it could have been a little tighter overall. And not just with Olsen. Even with Kurt figuring out Dexter was the one who killed his son, that wasn't portrayed very smoothly. It worked well enough, I guess. But the whole thing could have unfolded more clearly and cleverly. And then, of course, the biggest writing flop was replacing M99 with ketamine. And that one is a real head-scratcher. If I'm understanding correctly, it almost feels like that was a deliberate retcon. But there was no reason for this. Just a small shift in detail could have kept that aligned with the OG and true to form. So that was a baffling decision. And then there was that episode where Dexter was shot and he went flying through glass twice. And there was no payoff for those injuries, as Dexter seemed perfectly fine the next day. The only acceptable payoff for having Dexter suffer those injuries is to have him badly debilitated in the next episode. And that didn't happen. He was just a little tired and in need of a damn fine cup of coffee. Those criticisms aside, I did not have any major problems with Dexter New Blood. I see a lot of fans complaining that it was sloppy writing, and at times I feel like I've traveled back in time to 2018, the way so many people are claiming the season was rushed. To be sure, the writing could have been smoother, but I did not think anything was rushed, nothing of the sort. On the contrary, I thought the pacing was excellent, and it built up to a damn fine level of intensity down the final stretch over the last three episodes. And then the other four main complaints I've been seeing are, number one, there was no payoff involving a final confrontation between Dexter and Batista. Number two, there were too many loose ends. Number three, Angela was a small town super cop who solved the Bay Harbor butcher case in two days after a Google search. Number four, Dexter was terribly out of character. Tackling these one at a time. 
Number one, the thing with Batista. No payoff? Really? This was the payoff. Look at his face. That's Batista. Just look at him. I defy you to tell me that that isn't a payoff right there. We didn't need to see them together for this payoff to be there. The whole point here is Batista knows now, even if he long doubted or never even suspected Dexter of anything over the last 10 years, and someone from the OG cast discovering that Dexter was this horrible, monstrous serial killer is a huge payoff. Added bonus, we now know Masuka is engaged, and he's sending email invites to his bachelor party. Sounds like Quinn wants to bail on the festivities. But Batista didn't need to show up. Him knowing was the payoff. Not that I would have minded if he figured in more prominently, but they didn't go that route. Number two, too many loose ends? Again, really? Too many loose ends? Oof, maron. I respectfully disagree. Good art never ties up every loose end. Now, I'm not claiming Dexter New Blood was some type of high art or anything of the sort, but they don't need to tie up every loose end, and there really weren't any significant loose ends in any case. My personal favorite television show is Twin Peaks, and the loyal fans of that show are still always theorizing to this day, despite the fact that Twin Peaks is likely finished forever. For me, that's part of the fun, and I'm still itching for more Twin Peaks. I'm just itching. But the reality is, any loose ends in Dexter New Blood were insignificant in the grand scheme of the story. Number 3. Super Cop Angela This is another baffling complaint I'm seeing from many, and another one I strongly disagree with. Angela was always being built up as the big obstacle for Dexter all season long. People are complaining that some small-time cop who couldn't even solve the murders in her own town discovered that Dexter was the Bay Harbor Butcher when badasses like Frank Lundy and other members of the FBI and the Miami Metro team could not. The problem with this viewpoint is it neglects too many factors. Angela didn't just wake up one morning and say, Hey, I'm gonna check Google and see if my boyfriend might be a serial killer. Angela got a lot of assists along the way. Molly, Batista, Harrison via Audrey, The Vet, Kurt, Miles, and Logan. They all gave her pieces of the puzzle that led her along on her path. None of this was random. It was set up beautifully. Dexter himself provided a big assist in his own demise when he first got caught in the big lie that he never had any children. Right off the bat, that's a big red flag, but one she overlooked and forgave him for. Angela likewise learns of a son named Harrison from Batista, and then Audrey informs her that Jim Lindsay is a fake name, at which point Angela is able to track down Dexter Morgan's obituary. The fact that the man she was sleeping with told so many lies and faked his own death was more than enough to make Angela suspicious. It was clear that Dexter was hiding something from his past. Logan led her to Miles, which led her to the needle mark and the matching needle mark on Jasper, and Molly got a creepy vibe from Dexter. All of these little pieces were integral to Angela digging and coming up with the Bay Harbor Butcher. Where again, Molly thinks they got the wrong guy in Sergeant James Dokes. The vet sealed the deal when she told Angela that Dexter grabbed some ketamine for Vincent Van Goat. And then the anonymous note, presumably from Kurt himself, provided the tip that Dexter killed Matt and the missing screw sealed the deal. Meanwhile, this entire time when Angela was investigating Dexter, he was completely oblivious to the fact that she was giving him the cold shoulder because he was lost in his fantasies of a father-son team unleashing their dark passengers as a dynamic duo. The only problem in Angela figuring out that Dexter was the Bay Harbor Butcher was the aforementioned M99 ketamine discrepancy, which was entirely unnecessary. That was bad. But that writing blunder aside, which could have easily been adjusted to better fit, Angela was fed plenty of information that led her to digging. 
There was nothing unreasonable about it. Angela didn't need to be a super cop to put the pieces of the puzzle together. And unlike Lundy and the rest of the FBI and Miami Metro, Angela had all the puzzle pieces she needed to get the big picture. And finally, number four, Dexter was totally out of character. The thing of it is, this was never the same Dexter from the original run. This was a drastically different version of Dexter right out of the gate. Harry was gone, and Harry's absence was a representation of the fact that Dexter was no longer driven by the code that once drove him. Instead of Harry's code, he was driven by Deb's guilt. Ten years of sobriety was an arduous struggle for Dexter. It was difficult to the point that after nearly ten long years without a kill, he was still checking off every single day on the calendar. It took every fiber of his being to suppress his dark passenger. Refraining from being a monster was a difficult chore, and he tackled this challenge in heroic fashion by maintaining a steady routine. This routine began each day with the morning ritual involving the majestic white buck. Every morning Dexter followed, providing him the thrill of the hunt without the climax of the actual kill. And every morning ended in triumph, where he had the chance to kill the buck, but Dexter exhibited tremendous self-restraint. The routine was ruined when Matt Caldwell killed the majestic white buck. And like an alcoholic having a drink for the first time in 10 years, Dexter cut loose and slipped up. Dexter wasn't adhering to the code here. He was basically an alcoholic having a relapse. Dexter didn't properly vet Matt. The only evidence he had for Matt fitting the code was hearsay from some degenerate broken down. And Dexter didn't meticulously follow the code and plan the kill. This was an impulse kill. The code didn't figure into this kill at all. Dexter was very sloppy, and he was so ill-prepared that he had no idea how to dispose of the body, something that ultimately helped contribute to his own demise. This coincided with Harrison unexpectedly returning into his life when Dexter had already slipped up. All season long, Dexter wanted to believe that Harrison was like him, and this was for entirely selfish reasons. Dexter wanted Harrison to be just like him because that would give him an excuse to continue killing instead of going back into self-imposed hibernation. After all, if Harrison was just like Dexter, then Dexter would have no choice but to teach Harrison the code that nutjob Harry instilled in him back when Dex was a young lad. But the drive here is selfish. And ironically, his desire to teach Harrison the code is, in itself, a violation of that very code. Something Dexter's inner Harry monologue stressed way back in the Miguel Prado season. Again, Dexter was no longer driven by adhering to the code. He was driven by selfish reasons. The Deb guilt still existed, but Dexter stopped listening to his guilty conscience because he wanted to believe Harrison was just like him. Dexter was now driven by a desire to ignore his guilt and resume being a serial killer, and his best justification for doing so was his fabricated need to teach Harrison the code. Bullshit. None of the people Dexter killed or tried to kill in Dexter New Blood were about adhering to the code. Matt Caldwell was an impulse kill, and the attacks on Miles and Jasper were terribly planned and executed. Even killing Kurt wasn't an old-school following of the code, because he was only teaching Harrison to justify his own selfish desire to live his life as a monster. Harrison was his scapegoat to drink. But somewhere along the line, Dexter knew that Harrison wasn't exactly like him, because if he truly believed it, he wouldn't have lied and gone out of his way to paint himself like a vigilante out fighting for justice. Dexter was no hero. He didn't kill for any sense of honor. He killed because he was a sick bastard who enjoys chopping people up. But Dexter wanted Harrison to be exactly like him because it was the only way he could internally justify killing again. And when Dexter killed Logan, this wasn't about the code either. At that point, Dexter didn't kill Logan and run off to escape. 
His primary objective wasn't about don't get caught. His primary objective was actually reuniting with Harrison. If it was just about not getting caught, Dexter would have killed Logan and fled the area, but he didn't. The code was far from his mind. And in the midst of all this, unbeknownst to him at that moment, Dexter subconsciously realized that he had finally formed a true loving bond with someone, his son Harrison. And when Harrison forced a moment of self-reflection on his old man, Dexter truly realized that he himself fit the code. Dexter didn't want to go on surviving in misery alone trying to resist his urges to be a monster, and he realized he fit his own code. But even here, right to the end, Dexter was selfish. Sure, it was poetic for him to die at the hands of his son, whose life he had effectively ruined from the onset. But it was selfish to put that on Harrison, because no doubt this is the type of thing that will scar Harrison for the rest of his life. In my mind, this was all totally in character with Dexter, especially in the context of how he evolved and struggled the past 10 years in his miserable existence, where he was fighting his urge to be true to himself, living life as a crazy, sick, demented monster. All things considered, I thought this was the perfect ending for Dexter at this particular point in the story, and I am mildly a little baffled by some of the esteemed backlash I've seen coming from various factions within the greater fanbase. Don't get me wrong, the perfect setup for a perfect ending was after Rita died. That should have propelled us into a final season 5 manhunt, where Dexter was exposed as the Bay Harbor Butcher with an ensuing manhunt. But they bottled it. They watered down the quality of the franchise after the epic first four seasons. And here we are. I thought the ending and the finale was perfect for where we are. And Dexter finally paid the piper. Something that needed to happen to provide the story with a proper ending. I sincerely believe that Dexter Newblood did an outstanding job in redeeming the Dexter franchise following the original Lumberjack ending. Bravo, Clyde and Michael. Job well done. As for the possibility of a Harrison spinoff series, I don't know. It doesn't seem like Michael C. Hall wants to play the Dexter role anymore, and I'm just thankful he came back to give us an awesome ending to his story. But even if he did come back in a minor role, does anyone really want to see Dexter playing second fiddle? Not me. And if they bring Harrison back, it would have great potential to tarnish his ending. If they were going to do a spinoff, I think it should take place back in Miami. Imagine it. The ultimate Dexter spinoff. Vince Masuka, an inside look at serial killers, best-selling book. It can start at Masuka's bachelor party, carry through his wedding, and he can finish writing his new book while recollecting the cases involving Brian Moser, George King, Arthur Mitchell, and of course, Dexter Morgan, the Bay Harbor Butcher himself. Meanwhile, Batista and others could put closure on the Bay Harbor Butcher story, completing the puzzle that exposes Dexter for the horrible monster he was. Throw Chief Angela Bishop into the case wrapping story, as she was the true hero in Dexter New Blood. Masuka can do book signing deals, he can do the talk show circuit, all the while neglecting his new bride, who in turn cheats on him with Quinn in a drunken stupor. Masuka is forced to move out, and he ultimately becomes roommates with Matthews in a modern-day odd couple scenario. So many possibilities. Perhaps Dokes can even act as Masuka's inner dark passenger, causing Masuka to snap and go on a killing spree of his own. Masuka and Dokes would be a dynamic duo that can carry a show. Where do I sign to get that series? Wrapped in plastic with a damn fine cup of coffee. You betcha. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed, and have a wonderful night. Damn it, Dexter. There are consequences to everything you do in life. Lose control, become powerless, and it's over. over. But my dad taught me a code. 
a way to channel those urges. Was there one final lesson where I said, go now far and wide and preach the code, my son? I don't think so. Harrison. I'm Jim's son. Son. Add that to the list of things I need to clean up. Then we discovered the link. They had all committed crimes they'd gotten away with. He's a fucking liar. What are you talking about? You know his real name is not even Jim Lindsay? Oh, yeah. Harrison. Cute kid. He said his dad's name isn't Jim Lindsay. Not that one. The one for Dexter Morgan. But it's not like he's hiding anything from you. I mean, you're the chief of police. How can I ever trust you, Jim? Or Dexter? Whoever the fuck you are. First, Kurt is creepy, and now Jim. If he wasn't your boyfriend, I would totally do a deep dive. He cares a lot about you and Harrison. I mean, look at how upset he got after his kid almost OD'd, nearly killed that drug dealer. What are you talking about? Okay, this is gonna sound crazy, but before he started pounding on me, he poked me in the neck with like a needle or some shit. How long did you keep Jim in custody? No more than an hour. I mean, I wasn't trying to punish him. I just wanted to make sure he cooled off. Just wanna check one more thing. Oh wait, your boyfriend, Jim, said he needed it for his goat. Vincent Van Goat, It's <laughs> a cute name. Because if I'm right, the Bay Harbor Butcher could still be out there, still feeling all butchery. Haynes, everything okay? Hey, tell me what's going on. Taking the whole role playing thing to the next level. Madre de Dios. Dexter Morgan is alive. And sitting in my jail cell. Where are you? I'll be there first thing tomorrow with everything I've got. And it's how I know that you, Dexter Morgan, are the Bay Harbor Butcher. Open your eyes and look at what you've done! Did you hear that? 30 bags, do you know what that means? It means there might be a new mass murderer out there, way worse than the ice truck killer. Your instincts were dead on. They're always dead on when it comes to killers. Why is that? I'll just go get that report. I'm watching you. You performed blood work that directly led to Rodrigo walking free. I asked myself, how the hell did that happen? The Bay Harbor Butcher took blood slides from his victims. Dexter is a blood spatter analyst, and jokes always thought there was something off about Dexter. You're connected to this. I don't know how, but I'm gonna find out, and some of what I find is gonna stick to your ass. I was just looking more closely at the dates of James's special forces missions, and... We have a positive idea on the body. And there may be an additional date which puts him out of the country. The burn victim is Sergeant Dokes. Why is Dexter in handcuffs? I have proof he's the Bay Harbor Butcher. Dokes is the Bay Harbor Butcher. Have you lost your mind? It's all over the station. You tried to frame Dexter. You know that's not true. Do I? Jesus fucking Christ, you're the Bay Harbor Butcher. I really hate that name. I always knew there was something with you. But this shit? What can I say? You were right about me. You want to make a change, Morgan. Now's the time. All you got to do is let me out of here. It's over, man. It is over when I say it is! What if Dokes was on to him? Jesus, what if Dexter is the real Bay Harbor Butcher? What if he isn't? End it now. Take responsibility for who you are, man. We'll go to the station together. I'll help you. We found definitive proof in that boathouse that Dokes was the Bay Harbor Butcher, and that despite me advising you to cease and desist, you continued on this reckless course. 
Are you the Bay Arbor Butcher? This is a place to talk about this. <laughs> Deb? He did this. He's the Bay Harbor Butcher. He has to be. You're a good cop. You're a good person. You're not like him. Put him down! Thank you. I'm the Bay Harbor Butcher. Fargo, don't you think? Oh, you betcha, yeah. Yeah. You betcha. You betcha. <laughs> I still have one more gift to wrap. In plastic. She's dead. Wrapped in plastic. I was thinking eggs and bacon. Maybe some of those frozen hash browns. And a damn fine cup of coffee. This is, excuse me, a damn fine cup of coffee. I've had, I can't tell you how many cups of coffee in my life, and this, this is one of the best. Next to his own severed head. A head which at this time has no name. I know his name. Is there any progress on putting up that stop sign over by Lewis's package store? That's an accident waiting to happen. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 <laughs>